In this video, we're going to numerically differentiate a simple function and play around with the step size. We want to estimate the derivative of the function y of x equals sine of x using the forward, backward, and central difference schemes. As you know, the accuracy of the derivative estimate relies on the step size between the points. A smaller step size leads to a smaller truncation error. The gist of the problem is to vary the step size to see how the accuracy of each scheme varies. The first step is to plot both the function and its analytical derivative. This will give us a good sense of the function's behavior. Let's jump into MATLAB to get started. Here we are in MATLAB. I'm going to make two anonymous functions, one representing the function y of x equals sine of x, and another representing its derivative dy dx. The black line is the function y of x equals sine of x, and the red line is its derivative cosine of x. In this problem, we'll be differentiating about the point x equals 2, which we can see on the plot here. Just looking at the sine of x curve, we can see that the slope at x equals 2 is going to be some negative value. If we go over to the cosine of x curve, we see that the value of the derivative at this point is about negative 0.4. When we compute the numeric derivatives, we'll hopefully end up with something relatively similar. The next part of the problem wants us to estimate dy dx using the backward, forward, and central difference schemes with a step size of 0.75. Before we do that, let me make some clarifications. It's been emphasized that the purpose of numerical differentiation is to approximate the derivative when you have discrete data instead of an analytical function. I just made two anonymous functions, so why and what are we differentiating? In a sense, I'm using these anonymous functions to make my own data set consisting of just three points x equals 2, one step size ahead of x equals 2, so x equals 2.75, and one step size behind x equals 2, or 1.25, plus their corresponding y values. The purpose of this problem is to understand the mechanics behind numerical differentiation, so I decided to use anonymous functions for two reasons. First, it's really easy to create my pretend three-element dataset from anonymous functions. Second, we want to compare the numeric estimate to the analytical derivative, which is also easily done with anonymous functions. Even though it looks like I'm using anonymous functions to illustrate a concept that largely applies to datasets, I'm really using them to extract the particular points I want to make my fictitious dataset. I hope this makes sense. With that out of the way, let's resume coding. Let's write the code to calculate the forward difference. To calculate the forward difference, we divide the difference in the y values of the future and the current point by the step size. The plot shows us the graphical depiction. We join the line connecting the current point, x equals 2, to the point ahead of it, x equals 2.75. We can see that the slope is steeper than the analytical value of the slope. In fact, the command window tells us that the forward difference derivative is negative 0.7, whereas the analytical derivative We can see the backward difference has a much more moderate slope, which underestimates the actual dy dx value. We can confirm the numerical values. The backward difference derivative is negative 0.05, whereas the analytical value is negative 0.4, which is a pretty stark contrast. Now let's do the central difference. The central difference extends from the future point to the previous point. The slope looks much closer to the analytical slope than the forward or the backward difference. It's still a little bit off, but it's definitely the best of the three. In fact, the central difference is just the average of the forward and the backward differences, which is the case when the step size is uniform throughout. I hope you understand why. Alright, let's do the last part of the problem. We want to compute the forward, backward, and central differences at x equals 2 using a step size which varies from 0.1 to 1 in increments of 0.1.
we also need to compute the percent error relative to the analytical derivative. To do so, we'll write a for loop and iterate through each step size. The code in the inner body of the for loop has to work for each derivative scheme, but each scheme requires different data points. I think the best way to tackle this problem is to nest a switch statement inside the for loop to control which type of derivative we'll calculate. Before we do that, we should probably define some parameters and storage vectors. The dx vec variable holds the various step sizes. The dy dx vector will store the derivative estimates. The colors variable is a matrix of RGB values which I'll use to change the plot colors later on. The turbo command is one of MATLAB's preset color schemes. This is just a formatting thing. Finally, the scheme variable is a character vector indicating the numerical derivative scheme we want. I just set it to forward for now, but we'll be able to change this later to backward or central. Now let's write the for loop and the nested switch statement. We have a for loop which iterates through each dx vec value. Inside the loop, we put a switch statement to control what to calculate based on the derivative scheme we want. Right now, I only have the code for the forward difference, but we'll expand this in a bit. First, we plot the forward difference, which is just the line connecting the current point to the future point. We then calculate the forward difference using this formula here. If we open the plot, we can see the graphical interpretation of increasing the step size. It's kind of hard to see from this angle, so I encourage you to zoom in and play around with the plot on your own. As we increase the step size, the slope of each line gets progressively steeper. This means we're trending further away from the analytical derivative, so the percent error increases. As expected, increasing the step size increases the percent error. This particular plot looks somewhat linear, which is consistent with the theory that the forward difference's truncation error is on the order of the step size, h. Having the step size should approximately have the truncation error. The percent error at a step size of 0.8 is about 72%, whereas the percent error at a step size of 0.4 is roughly 40%, so the math checks out. Now let's add more cases to the switch statement so we can do the central difference.
And now we can see the effect of the step size on the accuracy of the central difference. Even as the step size increases, the slope of the lines look fairly consistent. In fact, the largest percent error we get is just about 16%. The shape of the error plot looks parabolic, which reflects the fact that the central difference has a truncation error on the order of the square of the step size. At a step size of, say, 0.6, we have a percent error of about 6%. If we have the step size, the percent error is about 1.5%, which is about one quarter of the percent error at a step size of 0.6. Now that we've investigated the forward and central differences, let's code the backward difference. The backward difference becomes increasingly more inaccurate as the step size increases. In fact, we know that the function has a negative slope at x equals 2, but some of the backward differences we see actually give a positive slope due to the function's geometry. The percent error plot looks much more linear than the forward difference. We can pick off two values, such as delta x equals 0.2 and delta x equals 0.4, and see that the smaller step size has about half the error as the larger step size. This confirms that the backward difference has a truncation error on the order of the step size, just like the forward difference. This concludes the step size exploration problem. To recap, we drew the forward, backward, and central differences for a function and saw how the step size affects the accuracy of the derivative estimate. I think you can take a lot away from this video, but you can learn even more through some self-experimentation. You can easily change the function, the point at which you want to compute dy dx, and the step size. Test out different functions and parameters and see how the derivative schemes behave. Let me know if you find anything weird or surprising. I'm always interested in finding new discoveries. See you next time.